he, he wants to push it just a little bit. But I was up there as Ella was singing, and uh, you know, we, we do we take for granted the fact that Jesus loves me? Do I take it for granted? And I, I started, and I was up there, and I'm like, I love the songs, great song, great words. And the, the words of the verses are great. You know, my only hope, my everything is Jesus loves me. But just that simple three words. Jesus loves me. And I just, and I, I couldn't, I, I started thinking, Jesus, you actually love me. You, you love me. As much, you know, as much as, as my wife loves me, uh, which thankfully she does, uh, no matter all the problems that I've caused her, or the heartbreak, or or the frustration that I've caused her, and, 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 and she still loves me. And sometimes I'm amazed by that fact alone, that there is a person in this world that loves me as much as my wife does. Jesus loves me even more than that, and I've done far worse to him than I've done to any human being on this world. Uh, uh, the psalm says that when we've sinned against a person, we've actually sinned against God. Um, and he still loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for us. Jesus loves me. You get that? Like, is that, is that set with you? And just, man, just let that, let that, let that move around in the heads this morning. Jesus loves every single one of us. Hold on to that today. No matter what, no matter what comes in this life, Jesus loves you. Well, we are uh, on part four of our saying yes to Jesus as we get up to Easter. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about being uh, denied and what that feels like, and then actually being affirmed in our faith. So from being denied to being affirmed. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I, we, we listened to, to this, this great speaker uh, give three services over at the men's retreat, and, and every single one of them I want to steal, you know, so... Uh, men that, that were there, uh, you know, we want to be on the lookout. You may be hearing some of those sermons again, because uh, they were fantastic. Um, and he has he has so much energy when he's speaking. And I was and, I, and I'm watching him. I'm like, man, I want to want to speak like that. I want I want to just man be be all woo and, and and just let it go. And I think I can get there. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm fairly new with this preaching thing. I've been here a year, and I wasn't anywhere else before that. So this is like my first time. I was with teenagers for for ten years before that, um, and I could get energized with teenagers because teenagers, you know, will laugh with you and get excited. But sometimes you know, you get excited for adults. And you guys don't do anything back, okay? And I can see, I can see you you're like. Is he gonna freak out on us or what? And so, you know, uh, so I get nervous sometimes. I don't want to get too excited because I, you know, uh, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't want anyone to uh, think that I'm losing it or anything like that. But I watched this guy preaching to these to, to all these men, and it was so awesome to see response back and forth, right? And when, I'm, when you guys, you guys are great. I love. I, I told Joyce I missed her last week, but she's. When she's sitting out here uh, in her spot, you, you you used to sit way up close. I think the drums have you pushed back a little bit farther now, you know. But that, and that's all right. I, I can still see your face. And you smile at me, and that's one of my favorite times of the sermon when I look over at Joyce and she's smiling and nodding her head. And I just whoo, that makes me feel good. So I'm telling you, there's something about the response. And so I'm sitting in the audience, right, I'm listening to him speak, and he's getting excited. I'm getting excited, and there's that. There's that give and take. Yeah, so I want to encourage you, not for my sake, okay? Now, I, I love it when you guys respond to what I say, but I experienced something this weekend that was just awesome for me, being able to sit and listen to this guy preach. But I got so much more out of it when I was engaged with him. So I want to encourage you, any, whether you're listening to me or you go to a different church on vacation or you visit somebody and you're sitting to listen to someone speak, man, the more you can be Engaged in what he is saying or she is saying, the better off you are going to, the more you're going to get out of it. And I experienced that this weekend and I loved it. I love being able to listen to another guy preach uh, these sermons. And it was just awesome. So I'm pumped up. So I'm going to warn you now. I'm, I'm pumped up. I'm, I'm tired. It was a lot. You know, we had <laughs> we, we had a, a dorm room basically that we had slept in that was, that was basically the size for 
you know, probably like two people would live there for, if it was a college, it would be two people sharing this room. And we had four bunk beds and seven men <laughs> sleeping in this room for this night. Uh, not, not comfortable, we would say that the mattresses, Chris, about two inches, maybe. Two inches. It was pretty bad. It was like plastic mattresses, right, that on these bunk beds and chip particle board underneath the mattresses. So there's no give in that, in that thing. So you let, especially you're just laying right on this piece of wood. Um, the mattresses, though, are plastic, right? They're those, they're those old, you know, college dorm kind of plastic mattresses. And so you do your best to you get comfortable. Then you, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't sleep still. Uh, I, I, I roll a little bit. And uh, every time I roll, that plastic would just like blow up in my ears. It was crinkle, 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 crinkle. And so I'm like uncomfortable because I'm like, okay, I've got to, I got to stay still. I can't move. I'm going to wake everybody up if I roll over my other side. I can't move. I can't move. I'm, I'm no sleep. Like I, I fall asleep for like an hour and I wake up. I'm like, okay, is everyone asleep? Can I move just a little bit? And I hear that crinkle and I stop. Oh, it's awful. And then Chris got up to go to the bathroom like seven times. <laughs> <laughs> Open up the door of the bathroom, the light goes on. So it was it was a great time. Uh, lack of sleep is part of the is part of the thing, you know, and you go and you, you have a great time. Um, talk to these guys, talk to, to Trevor and, and Chris and Gordon Austin, uh, young young guy that comes every once in a while. He went to the thing. Uh, talk to them about what, what happened at, at that place. It was fantastic. Um, and I'm hoping that we catch fire from that. Ladies, there's a district women's retreat coming up in Des Moines. I want you to check that out. If you have any interest in going, we will put together a group of ladies to go to that. Um, it'll be a fantastic conference there as well. So uh, great, great things happening um, in our church, in our men. This men's Bible study is awesome. And now we're getting the ladies' Bible study going. Um, it is absolutely phenomenal what God is doing in our church. Um, I can't wait for you guys to hear the DS preach next week. Uh, he is so fun to listen to. And uh, he is an excitable uh, man. And he is, and I know some of you have, have been here before when he's been here, uh, before I came, but uh, he's a lot of fun. And you, next, next week's service, guys, is going to be a blast. I mean, you talk about how much fun you can have in a church service, that's what we're going to have next week. And then Easter Sunday is going to be even better. So I want you guys to be ready. Prepare yourselves. Get plenty of rest. Go to bed early on Saturday nights. And uh, be ready to go on Sunday mornings. And you know what? My friend, my friend, uh, Easter Sunday, I have a, I, I've been in my prayer time, my personal time with God. I don't, I don't, I, I get, I'm, I'm, I'm too much of a, I'm too much of a, uh, I don't know if competitive is right, I, I am competitive, that's, I don't know if that's the word I want to use right now, but I worry about the, the numbers, right? Uh, as a pastor, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to pay attention to the numbers of people that are coming in, and we have, the growth that we have seen at Grace Point has been phenomenal. I mean, we, we have 100% growth since I first came here. So we've doubled in number. That's awesome. Okay, we can't ask for more than that. Um, but we still have a sanctuary. If you look around, we have more empty seats than filled seats. Okay? What that tells me is there's so much potential here. There's so much opportunity for us to reach more and more people for Jesus Christ and for Him to come into this place and have a moving of the Holy Spirit where people are just filled around this altar. As I'm praying for God to give me a vision of what Easter Sunday is going to look like this year, I'm seeing people filling this place. Um, and I've asked him to, you know, God, I'm praying for 80 people. I'm just going to, I'll, I'll put that out for you guys. I'm praying for there to be 80 people in our service on Easter Sunday morning. Um, and I think that would be phenomenal. And I really believe that the Holy Spirit is going to move that day um, because we are going to be prayed up, we are going to be ready to go, and we are going to say yes to Jesus. And that is why I love this sermon series that we've been going through right now because it's, it gives us every opportunity to say yes. All the junk that is going on in our lives, all the things that, that bring us down, that forces us to say, man, I want to get away right now. I don't want to be around anybody. Even even my church family, I don't want to be around them. I don't want to be encouraged. I just want to be, dang it, I'm, I just, ugh. And we just go away and we don't come here and get lifted up. Even in our moments of despair, our moments of weakness, our moments of sadness, and we can still say yes to Jesus in all of those things. Today, we're going to look at being denied. Jesus was denied, right? Peter, awesome preacher of the apostles, uh, said he was going to love Jesus, serve him no matter what. And in one night, he denied Jesus three times. It's crazy, right? Like, this is Peter. This is, this is not... Just some Joe Schmo 
uh, that's been walking around following him, following Jesus, you know, from wherever he went to wherever he went to wherever he went. This is Peter, who was in the inner circle, who was right beside him, who actually performed miracles of his own, driving out evil spirits. And he denied Jesus three times in one night. It wasn't like he, you know, had a moment of realizing, oh, okay, yeah, I'm a little embarrassed. I'm following Jesus. Sorry, I'm sorry, God, I didn't mean to do that. And then he gets going good for a while, and there's another bad moment, a little bit farther down. No, it was three times in one night. And he, every time he did it, he could be thinking, did I really just do that? Have you ever been there? Did I really just do that? Did I really just say that word? Did I really just let that lie slip out? Did I really just whatever? I have been there more times than I want to count. And yet, Jesus loves me. That's what I was thinking about up there. Jesus, how can you love me? All the stuff I've done. And yet he does. But Peter went through this night and denied Jesus three times. Now, a lot of people will tell you and I'm, what God was working in Peter's life and, and Peter told Jesus that, no, Lord, I will never deny you. I will never do that. And Jesus goes in and says, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Jesus called it. He predicted it. Now the question is, did he make it happen? Did he make Peter deny him? I don't believe he made him deny him. I think he probably knew what was going to happen, just like he knows we are going to screw up from time to time. We are going to mess up. And what do we do after that? Jesus affirms us. Jesus meets with us again. He does not leave us. He does not condemn us. He will meet with us. And we're going to look at some passages of Scripture that shows that. Have you ever had one of those nights? One of those week-long periods? Month-long, year-long, decade-long? We just can't make the right decision in following Jesus Christ. You continue to deny Him. You continue to turn away from Him. You continue to seek out your own pleasures or your own, you think you need to be, uh, you, need, you think you need to work out your own affirmation. And that's what Peter was doing right here. Let's stand together real quick. Uh, Matthew chapter 26. I'm going to read two sections of scripture in here, starting with verse 31. Matthew 26, 31, it says, Then Jesus told them this very night, You will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered this very night before the rooster crows, You will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Now turn over to verse 69 of the same chapter, 26, 69. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You were also there with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. <laughs> then he went out to the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. Wow, with an oath? I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them, for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself and swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken before the rooster crowed, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Thank you. You may be seated. First time, okay. I don't know. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Get away from me. Leave me alone. Okay. Second time, he swore an oath. He swore an oath that he did not know who Jesus Christ was. Third time, curse me if I know the man, but I don't know him. Curse me if I do. I don't know him. Holy cow. That's some serious stuff. Like that, that is, uh, I mean, that's, that's playing with some fire right there. That's, that's, uh, and if we, you know, Peter, uh, God gives him grace. God doesn't strike him down. And if we look later on in the book of Acts, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they come before the apostles and they lied 
to the apostles about how much money they made on the sale of their property, and then they brought the money in, and they lied about the amount that they brought in. And what happens? Dead. They drop down dead in the place that they stood, and Peter swore an oath that he didn't know Jesus. He cursed himself if he, if he was lying. And, and he did lie. And yet God let him live. God gives Peter the chance to come back. Have you ever been there? I'm just going to keep asking that question. Have you ever been there? He said, what was I thinking? Have you ever, as Peter did, went outside and wept bitterly? Have you ever knelt at the side of your bed and wept over the things that you have done? Jesus told us in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. That mourn there in that passage of Scripture, the Sermon on the Mount, those who mourn their sins. Do you mourn your sins? The Jews, they did what? They, they would, they would, when they sinned or when they wanted to get God's attention and, and apologize for what they did, they went out in sackcloth and ashes. You ever heard of that before? Sackcloth and ashes? They would basically strip off all their clothes, put a, put a scratchy, itchy, burlap type sack over their body, and they would rub all this ash all over their body. And they'd go out in the street, and they would pound their fists on the ground in like perpetual torment. And they, they wept for their sins, and for the sins of their nation, for that matter. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there in a place where God has so convicted you of your sin that you mourn? That's what Peter was at. And he had denied Jesus three times. Just straight up, I don't know who Jesus is. Have you ever been there? Have you ever denied Jesus? And I'm not talking before you came to know him as your personal Lord and Savior. Have you ever done this since then? And we say that might be a silly question. Never do that. Crazy. Never do that. You know how to read about Peter? The man who stood next to Jesus while Jesus performed all these miracles? The man who had the power of God inside of himself that he was performing miracles side by side with Jesus? He denies him three times. Why is it not possible for us to do the same? Now the question here is, do we, is there different ways that we can do that? Sometimes we'll say, do you know Jesus Christ? We can say, yeah, absolutely, I know who he is. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus, Lord, virgin, God of cross. Yeah, I know. Does your lifestyle do that out? The choices you make around your coworkers, around your family members, around your neighbors, does that live out that you are accepting Jesus Christ in your life? Or do your actions show that you are denying the reality of Jesus inside of you? What do your actions say? And if your actions are denying Jesus, you're in the same boat as people. But you have denied Jesus. And here's the great thing. Jesus still loves you. Jesus still wants you to be a part of his life. He wants to come into your life and truly be there and affirm you. Even though you have denied Him, even though I have denied Him way too many times in my life, He wants to affirm me, stand me up so that I can stand before this world and say, yes, I know Jesus. He has saved me from my sins. I was here, and now I'm here. I was lost. I was broken, I was confused, I was terrified, I was distraught, and now I'm free. Now I'm excited for life. Now I have this joy that passes all understanding, a peace that comforts me no matter what I'm going through. I know that I know that I know that I know I'm going to spend eternity with him in heaven. I have that. I, was, I didn't have that over there. But because I know Jesus, 
And because He has affirmed me and showed me that my faith in Him is real and it will not be void, I can be here firm and stand in this place that says, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know Jesus because of what He has done in my heart. And He continues to meet with me. I'm going to turn to Matthew chapter 28, just one chapter over. Remain seated for this one. After the Sabbath, the dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the other place. Just come and see the place where he lived. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet, filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And we have other accounts where they did, where Jesus continued to appear to his disciples. He affirmed everything that had happened. In the story where Peter denied Jesus, he told his disciples, the apostles, that they would be scattered, right? That they would go their separate ways. That they would be lost in this world. Lost by not the right word. They would be out in this world on their own, scattered, separate from each other. That's a scary place to be. Peter then denies Jesus after he said he wouldn't. And Jesus shows up after he is resurrected from death. That's still today, right? We're still living in the day of after he has resurrected himself from the dead. And he is still coming to meet with all of us. He is here right now, I promise you. And he is wanting to meet with you. Every single one of you. He wants to meet with me. And he wants us to be able to stand firm and say, yes, Jesus, <laughs> even though did all shame, terrified, sorry, even though I did all that, because of what you did, I can stand here and have no guilt, no shame, but be free to worship you and free to live a life that says, I will follow God wherever you lead me. If I'm over there, I can't follow God. If I'm stuck in my shame, in my guilt, in my denial of Jesus in my life, if I'm stuck in that place, I'm stuck there. And that's where we find depression. That's where we find <laughs> anxiety. That's where we find guilt and shame and, and just not being able to move forward. Jesus gives us freedom to move. He gives us life and breath. And we have this ability to just go and be a part of this world. We don't follow this world, but we get involved in this world. And when we are not stuck in that place, when we are able to stand firm because Jesus has affirmed us, we have the ability to get our hands a little dirty. We have the ability to go into the dirty places of the world just like Jesus did and say, all right, God. You have affirmed me. You have given me the ability. You have given me strength to stand strong, even in the midst of all this stuff that I don't have to get caught up in anymore. If I'm over there, I'm not following God, I'm denying Jesus Christ, I'm going to get caught up in the world. I'm going to get lost in all the things that the world has to offer. But if I'm standing here and I'm affirmed in Jesus Christ and He is building me up, He is strengthening me every day. Every time I open up that Word of God, I'm getting stronger and stronger. My spiritual muscles are just getting bigger and bigger. And I can stand the test because He has affirmed me. 
He has given me proof of what He has done in my life. And that says, bring it, world. I can take anything you have to offer because my God is bigger. My God is stronger. And He is higher than any other. There is not a single thing in this world that will stop me if I am in the midst of Jesus Christ because He is the one that has built me up. When we try to build ourselves up in our own strength and we talk about um, <laughs> self-help courses or uh, uh, self-esteem, you know, we want to build that up and we do. But I want my esteem, my self-esteem to be in the fact that Jesus Christ is inside of me and the gifts and the abilities He has given me and not my own, you know, I practice this a hundred times a day so I'm awesome at it. No, He gave me the ability to do everything. And when I understand that affirmation, when I understand the goodness that He has given me, man, watch out, brother. Watch out, sister. I'm coming. And that's what I've got right now. I am so pumped up. And God has just re, He's reaffirmed me this week. As I have been preparing for this week, and I read that Matthew chapter 28, verse 9. Suddenly, Jesus met them. You ever had that moment? Where you don't, you're scared. These ladies were scared. They didn't know what was going to happen. They've been following Jesus for the last three years. Suddenly, he met them. In their fear, in their sorrow, in their anguish, in their desperation. Suddenly, Jesus was there. Jesus has an uncanny ability to meet us at the exact moment that we need him. It is insane how many times we, get, we start to get caught up in the, in the world, the feelings of the, what this world has to offer, the, uh, the trappings of the devil, right when we need him. Jesus is there. And he is willing and ready and able, and he desires for us to be affirmed, to be strong in his presence, and in his power, in his glory, he will do that work in us if we refuse to be stuck with him. And refuse is a strong word. To refuse to be stuck over there. Sometimes we're over here in the mess of the world, and, and sometimes even rightly so. See, but it, it's not fair what happened to me. I'm going to keep moving this way. It's not, it's not right that I have to go through this. I'm going to keep getting farther and farther away from being in the presence of Jesus Christ. Why did they do that to me? Why? 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 The question that we need to ask is not why. When we find ourselves stuck in a thing of the world, in a trapping of the devil. It's not a why question. The question we need to ask What do you want me to do, God? To what question? How do I respond to God? When I'm when I feel stuck, when I am stuck, when I'm getting farther and farther away from Him. It's not a why is this happening to me thing. It's alright, God, what are we going to do? What do you want me to do? What are you going to do for me? And how do I get back into this place where I'm standing from? Or I'm confident in my abilities because it is Jesus Christ that has my life. It's not my own strength. It's not my own powers. It's Jesus Christ. And He has proven it to me over and over again. Has Jesus ever proved Himself to you? He's proven Himself true time and time again. If He has proven Himself true in your life, you can have that affirmation. You can have this confidence that says, okay, God, I'm going, I'm going out of this world and I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. And I'm going to be bold. And I'm going to be confident. And I'm going to be assured in the fact that you have all of this worked out. I don't have to worry about the results. I don't have to worry about anything but proving you true in my own life. And you're going to take care of the details. It's awesome. Awesome. First thing we have to do, though, before we 
we be affirmed? We have to follow the example of Peter. Chapter 27, and verse, sorry, chapter 26, verse 75. And Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken before the rooster crowed, who was nine, and he was the three times. He went outside and he wept. There. There's another story uh, in one of the other Gospels where uh, after Jesus. Um, risen from the dead. The disciples are out fishing, right? They're out, they're out fishing, and they're, they're distraught the next day. They're, oh, we're going to go, guys, we're going to be fishermen again, you know, where Jesus is done. I'm just going to go back to my life. And they're casting their nets on the side of the boat, they're not catching anything. Suddenly this man appears on the shore. Cast your nets on the other side. And they do. And they reel in 157, I think the number was. I have to look it up again. 157 fish. They count it. It's awesome. Jesus is in the details. That's all you know about that. They catch all this now. And all of a sudden, Peter says, It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Peter had just denied him three times. And Jesus shows up. After he had risen from the dead, he shows up when the disciples needed him. When Peter needed him. And Peter throws on his robe, jumps out of the boat, and runs through all this water to get to Jesus because he was so grateful that Jesus met him right there. And Jesus had a delicious breakfast, the fish prepared for them already on the beach. The other disciples came up, and Jesus, he affirmed Peter in that moment. He affirmed the other disciples. In that moment. And he wants to affirm all of us today. But we've got to do what Peter did. We've got to accept our denial of Jesus. And then say, All right, God, what do you want me to do? Ellen, would you come and play? Of course, please. It doesn't, doesn't matter what. You know, uh, I don't know where you're at in your journey. Some of, some of you I do. Some of you I've had good talks with and know, know where you're at with your walk with Christ. Some of you, though, I don't have any idea. Sometimes we put on a good face. Sometimes we... We can make it look good. I did that a lot of years. Teenage years, early 20s. Everybody thought I was right where I needed to be. And I was probably about as far away as I could be. So I don't know where you're at individually. But I know that every single one of us through the actions of our lives have denied Jesus at one point or another. Peter was a follower of Jesus Christ. There's no, there's no denying that. He still made a mistake. He didn't account for that mistake. And Jesus was right there, ready to build him right back up. To reaffirm him show him that he still loved him. Where are you at today? Is there something that happened in your life that, that you know that you need to talk to God about? Is there something that, that you've done that you need to tell God I'm sorry? If Peter did it, there's no way I'm better than that.
God speaking to you right now. I pray that no matter what need you have, I pray that you know that God is ready to meet that need. Send your son died on the cross for us. And Lord God, I pray for each person in here that they would be affirmed, that you would build them up today, that you would show them how much you truly love them, and that when they are standing directly in your will and in your presence, Lord God, they are not stuck in the ways of the world, that they will have the confidence to go boldly out and do what the disciples did after you would reset the Holy Spirit to be with them, Lord God. The church grew every single day because the influence the disciples had on the world around them. Lord God, would you affirm us today so that we can have a powerful influence because the power of the Holy Spirit is living in our lives. He's active in our lives and He's showing the rest of the world, shining the light as we've talked about earlier today to the community around us. Lord God, let us be affirmed. And if there is anybody in here, Lord, Lord God, who is struggling with that affirmation, who is struggling with knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have a hold of them, that they are resting in your arms. Lord God, I pray that you would continue to speak to them, that you would continue to show them your love and show them the need that they have to accept you into their lives so that they can be rid of the junk of this world and be unstuck and free to live out a life of purpose, of your will, in this world today. Lord God, we love you, we praise you, we give you all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Go out and be the light.